It's simple. The way to become a vibrational match to your desires is if you create a change that puts you in the same vibration of what you are desiring. It is only when we change internally that we start to see a change in the external. Becoming a vibrational match will take work. It takes consistency and a level of honesty that you have to get to, but it is possible. We've seen and heard talks about manifestation and abundance and how to attract abundance in your life so many times. I think because it is so common, we kind of are skeptical of its validity. When there are so many methods and theories and things to do and say to yourself to create this amazing change in your life that could shift the entire trajectory of your life, we see it as something so far away from what we are actually accessible to. We forget that we are also accessible to that same power and information and it's all things that exist within ourselves. We assume that the people that have the leverage to talk about a success business or a great change in their life or their relationships. It comes from this imaginary or super divine source that came down and gave them a clue or an inkling of how to change their life. And it's partly true. The abundance really is in us. We have to reach a point so deep inside of us that takes away all of our fears, all of our limiting beliefs, and it kind of strips away all of the barriers that are keeping us from elevating into the life and the lifestyle that we actually want. Imagine yourself fresh and first being born into this world. You're not thinking of all of the many insecurities that you're going to have. Think about your energy in that way. And the more that we grow and the more that we exist in this society, there are just so many things outside of us and who we are that in a way taint us and make us feel insecure, feel like we are not enough, change the way that we view ourselves and it stops us from reaching the surface to who we actually are or reaching our full potential. Honestly, if you say you want something but you still hold feelings of unworthiness, you have a fear of success or negative connotations of people who are successful or people who have an abundant lifestyle, there is a part of you that is incapable of bridging the gap. It's really important to sit down with yourself and with your desires and really ask yourself the hard questions. Why is it when I say the things that I want out loud, I get this little cringe in the pit of my stomach that makes me feel like I shouldn't be saying it at all? What is it about me when I enter a room with people that are maybe successful or that are probably doing more because they have the accessibility to do more that I shrink inside and I feel like I'm unworthy of being there? What is it about, um, watching my favorite person and knowing that I have the same desires as them, but in my day-to-day -day life, I don't have the motivation to change my routine enough to put me in the same direction or in the same orbit of the people that I want to be like. Why do you stop yourself from being great? 100% of the time, there are may be haters in your life that you've experienced that just didn't understand or that were too childish to see themselves, but your biggest hater is yourself. Because do you see your hater every single day? Probably not. Do you have the imagery of all of the things that they've said to you? Yes. And who has the power over what comes to mind and what stays there? It's you at the end of the day and I had to realize that all of the flashbacks that I had of people not liking me, all of the things that used to make me feel bad about myself, those weren't happening externally, it was all happening internally and there was a point where I just had to stop making excuses as to why I couldn't have the things that I wanted, I was keeping myself from the things that I wanted for real. Instead of looking at the experiences in our life as reasons why we should not win, we have to view them as things that make us a shoe in to win. I had to be careful of not to hold on too tightly of the old stories that I told myself about who I was and the life that I thought that I had. It wasn't serving me anymore to bring up my past in every opportunity that I had to speak about my past. Like, at some point, 
I had to move on. And I think it's so hard for people to manifest when they don't know how to move on. They don't know how to move forward. They have so greatly attached their personality to who they've always been as an excuse to why they'll never be who they want to be. And I think the honest truth of why I did it is because I wasn't able to see it firsthand. I don't know anyone that's doing the same thing that I'm trying to do personally. I don't know the ins and outs of a person manifesting all the things that I want. So I liked to use that as an excuse. And then I got a thought in my mind of like, what if it's never been done before? Like, are you truly going to limit yourself to the greatness of all that you know that you can be? just because you haven't seen it yet. You could be something that the world has never seen before. Why would you waste your life with the opportunity to be that and choose not to be it because of the fear that you have for what it could be? I think sometimes when we have the dreams that we want for ourselves, it's not the fear of reaching that point. It's the fear of the things that could go wrong when you reach that point and the weight of all that you have maybe at that moment. It's like... When you reach a higher level and you have higher responsibilities and maybe you have a lot more at stake, you know that life comes in an up and down. So when you're so far up, you fear of what could potentially come down. And maybe the thought of what that could be could be something completely outside of what you can handle at this moment of your life. So in order to protect yourself from the things that could go wrong at that level, you just choose not to act in the here and now. And I want you to stop doing that because you're speaking yourself out of your greatness. You're speaking yourself out of something that you've never even experienced for what? Like, I guess I am slowly trickling out of the fear mindset of who I am and who I could potentially be. I was someone that equated people winning with them being bad people because I knew a lot of very just not the best people that were able to do a lot more things that had a lot more money and it's not to say that they weren't good people it's just like I knew someone that was terrible in school like literally terrible in school had to go to like the bad kid school was stealing, drugs, all of the things. And then in his adult life, he became something elevated and more people knew him. And I'm like, wow, so you really, it it really can happen to anyone. You know what I'm saying? And it's like my ego that has tried to do things by the book, that has tried to be the best that I can be at the things that I've done. And it's really like, did I do all of those things for me? Or did I do all of those things for what people could say about me? And at the end of the day, People didn't like me anyway, so why was I doing it? You know, it's like I put myself in a box and then I get mad because I'm in a box. No one told me to exist and live there. We have to use our specific situation and alchemize off of the energy that it brings us. We take our unique experiences and we take our fears. We take the cards that we were dealt and we say, okay, now with the power that I know that I have, how can I take this and make a life of my dreams? What is standing in the way of my desires? Do I have the mental strength to harness the fear that I have over my life and alchemize it into my manifestations? Do I actually have the ability to change the narrative of what I believe my life could be? I think this is why journaling is so important is because it gives us an opportunity to become aware of ourselves, aware of our thoughts, aware of our feelings, our emotions, enough to get to the root and enough to nurture ourselves through specific moments in our lives that we feel like we really cannot let go. Forgiveness is extremely important in moving on and moving upward and moving forward and manifesting. Most of the times in the pit of our fears and our adversities and when we're in fight or flight, it's hard for us to make clear and conducive decisions for the life that we actually want. When there's so much boiling inside of us and all you see is the, the turbulence and the bubbles of the emotions and the fears and all of these things that have made you who you were, it's easy for us to go back and make decisions that we've always made. 
But it's very hard to see the truth of who we are in that turbulence, in all of that mess. When you are aware enough to nurture yourself through those feelings, through journaling or talking or speaking to someone that is with you and that sees you and that loves you, only then are you really able to make clear decisions for yourself. I, like the many people in the world, was just tired of making the same mistakes out of fear of what I would become if I made a change. I'm someone that is very much a woman of routine. I am very much a creature of habit and I don't even like picking the wrong movie on Netflix and being annoyed with the time that I spent watching something terrible. So when I have to make a decision that's as big as maybe trying something out for the first time that could potentially change my life, there is a lot of fear there because, you know, failure is always in the back of a person's mind. The thoughts of other people not liking you or you know people that don't like you and then potentially being able to see it. And at the end of the day, you know, I had to realize that that was just my ego thinking and over exaggerating my importance in other people's lives. You know, genuinely at the end of the day, the things that I want, no one knows them and no one cares if I have them or not. People, majority actually want me to have the life that I desire because majority of the people actually really like me as much as I think that there's all these haters out there that I need a stunt on it's really my lifestyle is not like that so have you ever met someone that is a runner in their life not necessarily that they run for a sport I'm just saying when it comes time for them to take accountability for their actions enough to see the fault in their decisions and grow and change and learn they often trickle back to their past mistakes they often trickle back to maybe addiction or maybe the people in their lives that were with them at a certain point that are also there still and can maybe support their inability to grow and learn because it serves them in some type of way these people assume that love isn't present in the areas that are requiring them to grow and learn and change for the better so sometimes they make rash and self-destructive decisions, thus digging a deeper hole that is maybe even harder to get themselves out of than the one before was. I think when it comes down to manifestation, the honesty that comes when you are actually tired of your own shit. And I think so many people are outside of the things that they want because they aren't honest with themselves enough about why they are not there yet. Is there more that I could do? Yes, there's always more that could be done. Am I going to spend another month not doing it? Or I'm just going to surrender to the greatness that I know that I can be and do it. I think growth only happens when you're able to see yourself in your situation from a high enough place to be able to love and nurture yourself through that change and through that evolution. If you're unable to see yourself, if you're unable to get comfortable with the ugly truth of your mistakes enough to know not to make them again then maybe starting to look in the mirror is where you should start sometimes it is our ego i believe that likes to replay scenarios in the back of our mind repeatedly just to conjure up a better story that we tell ourselves about the mistakes that we've made it's only when you're actually able to see your mistakes enough to say like okay yeah i handled that poorly okay yeah this took and this deserved a better version of me and it's okay that i was not there that was another mistake because i am human when you're able to really get to that truth of like i'm no longer going to force a different story out of the situation just so that i can sleep well at night knowing that i've made a mistake here i think that's when you're ready to make that change i think that's the key moment in your life that is ready and able to do the work hard enough to manifest more. I think what's so awe-inspiring about manifestation is that you really can't cut any corners. It's so in the quantum mechanics of who we are as human beings. It's in our DNA. It's in our frequency that you truly cannot fake it. 
you are what you manifest if you are manifesting something that is outside of what it is you want you have to get real about why it's in your orbit in the first place and i had to be real about my relationships that i would attract about the friendships that i existed in in the groups that i found myself present in i had to realize like once I knew that I did not want to be this way anymore, I had to make a change to remove myself because I was no longer able to learn and grow in these spaces and I had to get real about that. I had to accept that there was a part of me that was just like them enough to be comfortable in these settings, enough to say that, okay, this is no longer acceptable for me anymore and I will make that change. I think some of us are so easily tolerant to the bs like we can tolerate so much and maybe it stems from just having an early childhood development of a lot of chaos and a lot of bs that you had to be able to just be okay with because you didn't have the power to change anything so often earlier in our lives we're kind of learning how to conform to bs we're learning how to stay quiet in certain situations that feel really, really wrong. And we grow up and existing in this space that never feels right for us. So we just get quieter and quieter. And then something inside of you just feels like it's imprisoned. It's like you grow up, you look in the mirror and you're not even who you want to be because you've swallowed so much of you down. Now you have to learn how to pull yourself to the surface from all of the gunk and things that we've suppressed in our lives, the things that we've witnessed, the things that scare us. And you have the ability to do that. It's just going to take the work of releasing it. At the end of the day, we are rewiring our minds. We're rewiring and regulating our DNA. It's going to take a lot more work than just your average, I say I want it, I'm eventually going to get it. It's going to take a lot more work. It's going to take a lot more dieting of the mind. Maybe it's the things that you listen to. Maybe it's the, thing that you, the things that you watch before you go to bed. I realize that in order to even get to here, and I'm nowhere near where I want to be, but to get here, there had to be so much dieting and changing and just the way that I talked to people had to change. And you, didn't, you don't realize how seriously you took it until you're in a group of people that are kind of the same age and you realize the things that they do and you're like, dang, like I really stood on business about who I am and the things that I wanted for myself that I don't even want to do those things anymore. Those things don't even appeal to me. Having those types of conversations don't even appeal to me anymore. Caring about the things that you feel like are just open entertainment are just not even my vibe. You know, there's just so much more to say. There's so much more conversations to be had that I'm really trying to use my time wisely here. and. That's only my journey. I can't force that, but I am interested to see with the vibration that I'm sending out into the universe, what other types of conversations that I will be able to have in this life. So yes, I think it's important to journal, journal, you know, heal, talk, commune, make your own food, nurture yourself for real. I feel like we spend so much time in the entertainment aspect of our alone time. And yeah, who wants to sit down and unpack maybe years of things that just didn't feel right to you? You're afraid of it going too far and you actually acting on those emotions. And when I say skip steps, I mean we have to reach a level of vulnerability within ourselves to actually get to the root enough to have those real conversations in order to actually make a real change in our lives. We have to let the parts of our ego that kind of reach the surface and make those rash decisions for ourselves, we have to let it show through so we know what to do with it when it comes. We have to be able to recognize that sometimes our ego, although it can be a powerful tool when we need it, it is not us. And sometimes it makes decisions that are not in our best interest. Outside of our ego is a real freedom to express, to learn, to grow. And we only realize that once we reach a point where we're at a level of awareness where we're outside of our ego. I want everyone to feel the freedom of a quieted ego, um, just to ask more questions and realize, hmm, why did I want that? Did I want that because my ego wanted that? 
Did I say that because my ego felt better after I did? You know, those are the types of questions that I have. My mission is to be a small particle of a bigger plan that shifts this entire world into a higher consciousness so that the good things can flow in this world and we can create a higher timeline for this whole planet. Yeah, I think the world is waking up to the fact that there is maybe 144,000 people that are supposed to be here to shake some things up and I'm okay with it being just the internal world of a person's mind that actually feels awakened by the messages that I share because this is where it starts. I made a major change in my life by just watching so many people that inspired me and feeling like, hmm, damn it, I can do it too, you know? And I want more people to do that. I think I'm just doing my due diligence as someone that was once like someone that used to watch and wanted to be a part of the movement of change and awareness and consciousness and making the great shift into the 5D because I truly believe that that's a thing. So when we go out into the world after this conversation and we are experiencing the world now with this level of awareness, it creates that ripple effect that makes the real shift. Overall, all of this is a mindset shift. When you see yourself as the ultimate creator of your life and realize the great responsibility and privilege that you have to be a creator in this life, you do it with a childlike joy and a fearless pursuit to make a really great change in your life. And I'm really excited for you. I'm super excited for where we have the opportunity to go. Thank you so much for liking, commenting, and subscribing. And let me know in the comments if there's something in your life that you would like to manifest. Maybe if we say it back and forth long enough, we'll be able to bring it into this life. Um, yeah, y'all are amazing. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys in my next one.